In this video, we're going to cover some of the new things that came out as part of Power BI's August feature updates, including things like visual format strings, data limits on your visuals, and the DAX query view online. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's actually start with the co-pilot feature, which you can use to ask questions about your semantic models in Power BI Desktop. So Copilot, if you didn't know already, is basically Microsoft's AI tool where you can ask questions in natural language, similar to ChatGPT, and it will basically query the model to answer your questions with a visual. Now, there's obviously a lot of advantages to using AI to extract insights from your dashboard. One is that it lets you get your insights really, really quickly. However, Copilot in Power BI does have a lot of barrier to entry. One of them is the fact that it's not available for you if you're not in in one of the paid SKUs. And it's also one of those features that are not turned on by default. So if you don't have admin or tenant rights, you probably won't be able to use this unless you are able to get this requested to be turned on. And this feature is turned off by default because the queries that you send through the AI model actually gets processed in US data center. So if you're based in a country outside of the US, for example, you will need to give explicit permission for this data to leave your territory, which is obviously a non-starter if you work with a lot of sensitive data. Visual level format strings have been added, which allows users to add formatting on their visual calculations. Visual calculations basically allow you to write uh, calculations directly on the visuals themselves without necessarily needing to know what the underlying semantic model is like. The nature of this visual calculation means that you don't have access to the tools that you typically would if you created this in a normal measure. One of them is you know, being able to update the format strings from the measure tools ribbon. But now with this option, you are now able to freely update this from the format pane section. With this new way to format your visual calculations, there is now three different levels that you can configure format strings in Power BI the model, the visual, and the element. So just think of this as prioritization in Power BI in which format strings is going to be shown on your report. So by default, all of the measures and columns will follow the formatting that you set on the model level, so the ribbon that you change on the top left. But if that measure is been put into a visual, for example, and there's a formatting string applied on that visual, the formatting that you applied on the visual level is the actual one that will be used, so overriding the formatting that you have on the model. Dynamic subscriptions are now generally available and out of preview. So this is basically an upgrade to the existing subscription feature that lets you customize the recipients and the filters applied to the versions of the reports that goes out into those uh, different customers. It's a really interesting feature and unfortunately I've not really been able to cover it because it does require a workspace backed by one of the paid capacities. But nonetheless, it's now a feature that you can use uh, in the Power BI experience as a generally available feature. You can now upload your Power BI files directly into OneDrive or SharePoint. So basically it allows you to save the Power BI files that you create from Power BI Desktop directly into a OneDrive or SharePoint location. At the beginning, when you save your file as a new file, you're able to choose a location from your OneDrive or SharePoint. It will then give you a dialog box, which will save your file in there for the first time. And that's basically your Power BI file linked into one of these OneDrive or SharePoint locations. So the next time that you save your file using the save icon from Power BI Desktop, it will actually upload this file into one of those repositories. You can click the ribbon above to see some information about this file, like when it was last uploaded, and an online link to where this file is saved. There's a new feature that lets you add data limits to your visuals, which is basically a hard-coded limit that you can put on the filters of your visuals to fix issues like your visuals taking too long to load because there's too much data that is being processed. You can access this by going to the filter pane, then under filters on this visual, 
selecting data limit. Now the update doesn't really give a lot more information about this data limit or any other documentation around how it works. Um, so things like how do I know which rows are going to be kept and uh, how it works with other features like measures, for example, because those are explicitly defined. Now I don't typically get issues like visuals taking too long to load because there's too much data. Uh, typically when I do encounter this, the best fix that I find doing is actually fixing it on the model or fixing my measures to uh, minimize this loading. And I wouldn't really think about truncating my results as a means to fix uh, visuals taking too long to load. However, there might be some use cases for this feature. So we'll have to see how this will work in the future. You now have the option to write DAX queries in the Power BI service. Now, this is an option that you will get from the semantic model that is published in your Power BI service. And when you select this option, you will get the DAX query view, which is basically the exact same experience as the one from Power BI Desktop. It's always good to see more Power BI Desktop features moving over to the Power BI service just because it gives users a lot more options when it comes to working with uh, dashboards. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was in this month's update, only the ones that were pretty interesting to me. So if you want to know more about what came out this month and anything else, I will leave the link to the blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so let's do the better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.